Hello everybody, this is Tekka. I was not expecting to make a video tonight, but there's been a lot going on today. Um, I completely reorganized this room, well at least everything that you uh, can't see has been completely changed because I have a lot of hardware type projects coming up, so I'm super excited for that. It's a Saturday night, so we're drinking on some uh, Top Cutter IPA from Pale Breaker, absolutely delicious. And I am installing Ubuntu, as you can see on my main desktop computer. I'm not gonna talk too much about exactly why that is at the moment. Uh, subscribe, ring that bell, and you'll get more on that a little bit later. But I've been running into an issue. I have noticed that the Ubuntu store is simply not opening. But do not fret, that is okay. Uh, I don't really like the Ubuntu store. So in this video, what we're gonna be doing is installing and using the Symatic, or Sib, Synaptic, Synaptic, Synaptic Package Manager. If you're running on Ubuntu or any really Debian-based system, this package manager is absolutely wonderful. It's not the prettiest thing around, but um, it does remind me a lot of the uh, GUI for uh, Yast within OpenSUSE, and I love that personally. So to actually get this first, we're going to want to simply add the universe repository. Go ahead and hit enter, and it's going to add that. And then when it is done, we're going to run a sudo apt update command. And then once it does that, we can simply go ahead and paste in the sudo apt install synaptic. Go ahead and hit enter. Yes, and it's going to go ahead and download, fetch those packages, and install it on our system. And then when it's done, we should have it. So first things first, I'm going to get rid of that so I don't keep clicking on it. And then if I search it up, Synaptic Package Manager, right there, you're gonna want to type in your password to go ahead and open it up. And on the very first uh, time you actually open it, it's going to give you a little quick introduction. This just goes over the basic functionality of select a package and you want to choose from the package menu, double click on the package name, and then you could select actions. We're gonna be running over all that in just a sec because there are a couple things that I want to grab. And first things first, you can see it's not super beautiful, but it is very functional. So we go here, search, I want GIMP, for example, hit enter, and then it's gonna bring up all the packages that include GIMP, whether that be in the description or the title. This right here is the GIMP that I want. So I'm simply going to check this box, hit mark for installation, and then it's gonna give you all the changes that it's gonna actually do on your system. We're gonna go ahead and mark that. So it's gonna mark both GIMP and all the other packages that it's going to need to successfully install. And then to install a package after you have it checked, you're just going to want to go ahead and click apply and then click apply again. And then it's going to run through the process and install the software. And then in any second, I will have GIMP on my system. So if I go over here, GIMP, I have GIMP. And that's not all you could do with it. It's obviously a p GUI for the uh, apt package manager, but there's really a lot more that you could do with it to actually manage and control your package management. One thing I didn't really point out, if you actually click on the application here, we have the uh, screenshot, the actual change logs, the descriptions, you can visit the homepage and a lot more. But one thing that's pretty cool is we have this package installed and let's say we want to keep it on this current version because either th there could be a number of reasons. The new version has features you don't like. Uh, you just want it to be stable and you want to keep using the same thing. You can freeze this version. So to do that, we'll go over to package. You click on lock version and now that version is locked. So it will not upgrade when you run your full package upgrades. And to undo that, you just go package, you uncheck lock version and now it will continue with the updates. Another thing too, you can see we went have GIMP right here because that's what we searched for. If I go ahead and click on all, this is literally every single package that is available to us with our current repository set. So you can just skim through here and check things as you would like to. Obviously, we can keep searching things. Now down here, you have a couple different things. You have section, status, origin, custom filters, and architecture. If I go ahead and hit sections here, it kind of gives us that more category look. So let's say we wanted things that are specifically in communication. I could go ahead and select that and see what's there. Additionally, we have the multiverse and universe repositories that we could go ahead and look through. And if I go down under stats, this is where we can go ahead and see all of our installed applications. So this is everything on our system. We have whatever is installed manually and not installed, and that's just going to, again, give us a list of everything in our repositories that is not currently on our system. 
If I go over here to origin, this is where we can actually see those specific repositories and check out what applications are from what. Then we have custom filters, so you can find broken changes, uh, search filters, upgradable. So if I hit that, it's not gonna show anything because I recently upgraded my system. And then again, we have search results. The last thing I searched for was GIMP. And another thing with the actual package management, let's uh, go ahead and select GIMP again here. Go under package. You can go ahead and mark it for uh, installation, mark it for removal, mark it for complete removal. Download the change log in here under properties. You get more specific things about those applications, such as the exact version numbers, those download sizes. If we go over here under dependencies, you can see every other application that it depends on to actually be able to run. Then we have installed files here where everything is on our system from this particular package. And then again, version numbers. Now, this was just a little quick video for this Saturday night. I thought I'd go ahead and cover this because I've never talked about it in the past. And one thing, I have a It's Foss article that you guys might be interested in reading. Um, I've known about Symaptic or Synaptic, the Synaptic Package Manager, but I used It's Foss to get the uh, downloads and all that just to make sure I was doing all the commands right. So that will be linked down below. And with that said, I would like to thank our YouTube members and Patreon supporters. We have a couple top tier Patreons. We have Mitchell, Valentino, Phil Mac, Kyle, and Timo Antony. Thank you guys so much and thank you to all the other Techie and Techie Plus members. I hope you all have an absolutely beautiful day. There is a lot to come in the coming weeks. Even though school is starting soon, I'm nervous about that. It's been like a year since I've been to college. Start my junior year super both excited and nervous. So I mentioned this on Twitter. Um, I usually do like kind of daily uploads where I miss a day here or there. But because of that, I might not be able to upload as often when that starts here in a couple weeks. So I'm still going to have a goal of five videos a week, but I will make sure to upload at least three videos a week uh, going forward. Uh, with all that said, subscribe, ring that bell so you do not miss those upcoming videos. Um, and goodbye.